Hi there, in this video, I'm gonna tell you about the exciting new firmware update for the Z8. So Nikon has just released a major firmware update for its Z8, and that is version 2.0. And it's a really exciting and much anticipated update that many photographers have been waiting for. So in this video, I'm going to tell you some of the major upgrades that this firmware brings. I'm going to quickly tell you how to get it and install it. And then I'm going to give you my first impressions after a quick test out in my back garden to tell you how I think it's improved. So stay with me because I'm going to tell you how this firmware version can really help you to enjoy your photography. The Z8 itself is a massive improvement over my old mirrorless camera, which was a Z6 II. Now I have made several videos discussing how frustrated I was with the autofocus on the Z6 II, but the Z8 has really um, blown me away with its capabilities. And so this upgrade to the firmware should improve that even further. Now one of the big differences for me will be the bird recognition. Now this trickled down from the 4.1 version of the firmware that was introduced for the Z9 and we've now got it in the Z8. It's going to make such a difference because there were times in um, the Z8 where particularly with busy backgrounds such as trees or water, that the Z8 still did struggle a little bit to um, focus on birds if the, the birds were in flight. And this should really help to sort that out. One great thing about Nikon, unlike some other manufacturers, is they do seem really committed to existing users and they want to significantly and consistently upgrade the capabilities of their equipment through firmware upgrades. And so this firmware upgrade does bring new features and improves on some of the old ones. Now, if you haven't yet got the firmware update, it's a really simple and quick process. All you need to do is go onto the Nikon Download Center, and I've put a link for that down below in the description. You download the firmware update onto your computer, then you transfer it onto a blank memory card, put the memory card into your camera, and then you go into the setup menu right at the very bottom and you'll find firmware update just there. You click on that and then it takes another five minutes to just install it onto your camera and it's as simple as that. There are lots of enhancements and powerful new features included in this firmware update. Too many, in fact, to go into in this video. And so if you want to find out the full list, that's available again from the page on the download center where you get the firmware update from. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some highlights of the main things that have been introduced in this firmware update. Now, the first thing that's trickled down from the Z9 is auto capture. Now, this is a feature that allows you to set up the camera so it will automatically and autonomously take photographs of a prescribed subject. Now, this can be something that's moving in a particular direction, something that comes within a prescribed distance or a particular subject. Now, once that prescribed subject is detected, the camera will either take a still or start recording video. It's all automatic. Now, I haven't yet tested this out. It's something that I'm gonna have a go at in the future, but the good thing thing about this that isn't available in the Z9 is that on the Z8 you can use this in DX crop mode. On the Z9 you can only use it in full frame. I'm sure that will change but you can use it in full frame and DX mode on the Z8. Also, it works in any of the Z8's high-speed shooting modes. So you can shoot at 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and 120 frames per second. Now, Nikon does claim that you'll be able to take a photograph of a bird automatically as it takes off. Um, I'll be interested to see whether that does actually work. Now, another feature that's been added is you can remotely control up to 16 Z8s using the NX Field remote capture software. 
square. Now, if you do happen to have 16 Z8s lying around, then this feature will be really useful for you. But I think I'm going to have to wait a little while yet before it's any use to me. One of the things that's going to be most important for me is the bird dedicated autofocus. Um, this should make a big difference because there are more species that will be recognized and the tracking has been enhanced so it will pick up autofocus on fast moving birds with complicated backgrounds. So I'm looking forward to getting out in the field and really giving this a proper test. Another little thing that might get overlooked is you can change the border widths of the focus overlay boxes um, because as they used to be, they were sometimes a little bit difficult to see. You can now increase the width of those borders either to level two or level three. Now I find number three is a little bit too thick so I've kept mine at number two. One feature that will be of particular interest to landscape photographers or people that do still life, macro or architectural photography is the new pixel shift feature. Now what this does is it produces a 180 megapixel image from either 16 or 32 exposures and it stitches them together to give a really high resolution image. Now what this will do is it will help reduce noise or moire patterning or just give you much better quality images. Now if you're a landscape photographer this could be really good especially if you're blowing up your images to a really large size. For me who does a little bit more wildlife photography it won't be as much use because it doesn't really work so well with moving subjects. If you're a portrait photographer there are three new picture controls. They are rich tone portrait, flat tone monochrome and deep tone monochrome and these add to some of the existing functions such as automatic white balance and skin soft now if you shoot in N-Log you can now shoot with an equivalent of 200 ISO. This will help with shadow areas and noise reduction and it just gives you a much better response from shooting video in N-Log. This morning I've been out into my hide for about an hour and I've spent a little bit of time just experimenting with the update to find out how it's changed the function of the Z8. So the way that I'd set up my Z8 before is I'd got a wide L box as my base autofocus um, that was used to detect the subject. Then if I really needed it, I could press a function button on the front of the camera um, to engage spot focus and then I use the AF on button to engage the autofocus. So the update has really made me look into the way that I use my autofocus to get the most out of it and there's some quite significant changes that I've made um, to the way that I use the autofocus now. From my experimentation this morning I've found some new ways of doing things. Now I still use my wide L box as the base autofocus just to detect the subject initially. I did try a spot focus but I found that it was just easier and quicker um, to just get all of the bird within that slightly bigger box. So I'm sticking with the L box. Now I've kept the function button on the front of the camera set to spot focus. But what I hadn't realized, which was probably a little bit of a schoolboy error, is that you can also, as well as assigning it to spot focus, add the addition of turning on the autofocus with the same button. What I was doing before is pressing the spot focus and then using the AF on button to engage the autofocus. So if you look at the menu here where you assign controls to the function buttons, I had selected only the AF area mode and set that to single spot. But the option underneath will also turn the AF on. And so that's so much better because you only have to press one button and you're focusing straight away, which was um, a real revelation to me this morning. Now I did find this morning that using this spot autofocus mode was still really useful for two reasons. If there was a bird slightly behind a branch, it was very easy to just quickly focus on that bird because the autofocus, um, if it was more general, tended to pick up the branch and wasn't quite as um, good. 
Also, if I was focused on something a long distance away and I wanted to move the focus quickly um, to something in the foreground, then I found the spot focus mode works so much better than trying to use a, a wider autofocus. Now, one big change that I have made is I've assigned my AF on button to an auto area autofocus mode. So it basically covers the entire frame. Now this was suggested by another YouTuber that I watched because he said that he's used this successfully for taking photos of birds in flight and the Z8 really does lock onto those birds really quickly um, using this mode. So I'm yet to test that out, but while I was out, in the hide, it was really useful for um, just quickly acquiring a bird that was in the frame within the wide L box. I only occasionally needed to switch to the spot focusing mode with the function button if the, the bird was a little bit further away or it was shooting between a couple of branches. Um, but using the two was really successful. Now I've also assigned the display button to the 3D tracker autofocus mode. Now this is something that I've never really used since I've had the Z8, um, but it's something that I wanna try out um, when I'm out in the field, just to see how different it is from the full area autofocus mode to see whether it gives me any advantages or not. This morning, I couldn't actually tell a great deal of difference while I was in the hide, but then the birds were fairly close to where I was. One little tip if you're shooting video is do remember to change the subject detection mode in both the stills menu and the video menu because it doesn't automatically change over. So you might find if you start filming video that the autofocus isn't working and that's because it might not be in the right subject detection. So make sure you change both before you start your shoot. What I've also done in the video menus is I've assigned my function button to just toggle between a wide L box and a single spot mode, just so I can focus on the subject a little bit more quickly if it's struggling to acquire focus lock. I do keep full time autofocus on, so the camera is constantly focusing on the subject. And I found this morning that as soon as the subject's within the wide L box again, the auto detect um, bird recognition picks up the bird and it stays locked on really well. I did spot a wood pigeon in a tree about 20 meters away. So I zoomed into 400 mil, I was handheld um, and the, the bird was mixed in amongst a lot of branches, but the autofocus point managed to land on the bird and it stayed locked onto it as well, even though it was in a really busy background. So I was really impressed um, with the capabilities of the autofocus picking up this bird. So you can see from this picture, the full frame version of the bird, and you can see how small it is in the frame, but when you zoom in, it's really done a good job of getting a very sharp and accurate photograph of this bird in such a complicated background. So I was really impressed with that. So this week I am gonna go out to a reserve and really try and put the capabilities of the Z8 to the test and take some photographs of birds in flight. So I'm really impressed so far with the improvements that this update has brought to the Z8, but the real test will be when I get out into the field and really put it to its test properly, because so far I've only spent a little bit of time in my back garden. So watch out for that video coming next week. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, do let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram or Vero account, that's at Deoakton Photography. Leave me your comments there and you can also see lots of my photographs. Now, if you like what I do on the channel and want to help support me to make future content like this, then you can also visit my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer, so head off over there because a purchase really does help me out and it's very much appreciated. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications it really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video, that goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, watch out for this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe and I'll see you soon.